Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton for Schoolhouse Rocked. I am so excited that you're back with us again today. As always, I have a really special guest on with me today. Her name is Faith Behrens, and she is a special needs consultant with HSLDA. For those of you who are not familiar with HSLDA, maybe you're just jumping onto this whole homeschooling train and you're trying to figure out what it is. HSLDA is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and they are a fantastic organization that really protects our rights as homeschoolers, they've been around for quite some time now, about 30, 30 years, right, Faith? Yes. No, 30 years? 35, actually. 35 years. Okay. I knew that there was just an anniversary last year, and I couldn't remember if it was 30 or 35. And um, so for the past 35 years, they have been um, fighting for the rights for us to be able to homeschool our children. And so Faith is one of their special needs consultants, and I'm excited to have her on the show. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be a part of, of this ministry and what you're doing. It's really awesome to be your guest today. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, tell us about you and your family and your background. Sure. So I'm a homeschooling mom of two. I have a 16-year-old daughter. She'll be 17 soon, and she has her learner's permit. She'll be getting her driver's oh license gosh. soon, so everybody can pray for me. <laughs> um, and then my son is nine. So we have two, and my mom lives with us, so she helps with our homeschooling, and we live here in Northern Virginia in Fauquier County, and I've been homeschooling for, um, let's see, I guess 12 plus years, yeah. Okay. Wow. I love Northern Virginia. It's one of my favorite parts of the country. We went uh, several years ago, and I remember driving through the, uh, do you say it Shenandoah Valley or Shenandoah Valley? That's it, Shenandoah Valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's so beautiful. I felt like we were driving through a picture. It was just, it was, it was, I think it was October and it was just breathtaking. It was so beautiful. Um, so yeah. you live in a very, very beautiful part of the country. Um, I'm, kind of, I'm from the desert in California, so it was quite different than what I grew up with. Um, but <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a scratchy throat today. Um, so we want to talk today about special needs. We Several months ago, um, we, we talked a little bit about special needs, and so I wanted to have you back on because I know that this is a huge concern for a lot of moms, especially for moms who are just starting to think about homeschooling, or maybe they're feeling like God is prompting them towards homeschooling, but they think, you know, I've got a special needs student, uh, and, and I know that, and we'll talk about kind of the whole range of what special needs is, but I've got a special needs student, and so I can't, and mm -hmm. oftentimes they think that's because, you know, their doctor or their school counselor or their ch child's preschool teacher or kindergarten teacher says, oh, well, they need to be in this specific program. And so as parents, we think, well, we want what's best for our kids. And so, of course, this is what's best for them. So we must put them in this special program. So I would love for you to first kind of tell your story about how you got involved with special needs and homeschooling. Sure. <laughs> Well, it's kind of a long and winding story, but um, God doesn't waste anything. So I was always a struggling student myself, and I have um, what's called dyscalculia, which is a math learning disability. And I usually tell parents they can think of that as the math version of dyslexia. Mm. So I struggled all through school, but with the help of my mom and getting tutors um, and accommodations in place, um, you know, I did fine with that kind of support. I'm a product of public school, unfortunately, um, but went off to college and that's really where I got the official diagnosis of dyscalculia. And again, with accommodations and support was able to do really well and then went on to get a master's degree. So, I mean, God doesn't waste anything. I always had a heart for um, my students that were struggling. I ended up you know, majoring in education and then became a reading specialist um, and felt like God put me in public school and private school. That was my ministry. But then when my own children came along, I uh, sent my daughter off to kindergarten half day and I was the reading specialist at the school where she was. And she was very high in reading and had a lot of struggles in math as well. And mm. she had some attention focus issues and some low frustration tolerance things going on and um, naturally in the afternoon I was working with her and supplementing what she was getting at school and 
um, loving being home with her. God had laid it on my heart to want to be home and to have another child. And I wanted to be my kid's teacher. And so um, I had a friend who was homeschooling and she was joking with me and saying, you're homeschooling, you're a homeschooler, <laughs> just wait and see, you're going to homeschool. And I said, no, 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 you know, <laughs> didn't want to homeschool. That wasn't on my radar at all. But, um, but God just really started working in my heart to that. I wanted to be the ones to disciple my children uh -huh. and raise them up in the Lord. And that education was, a, was about a lot more than just academics. Uh -huh. So um, naturally it just, you know, we made the shift. I left public school and um, my husband said, well, if you can find a job working in your field and making X amount of money part time and, um, or, you know, work from home, I still needed to work part time. And we started praying and I just felt like, how, what am I going to do? I'm a trained teacher. What else am I going to do? You know, how am I going to find a work from home job part time in my niche, which is reading specialist right. and dyslexia, but serving homeschoolers or private school students and get out of public school. And I just started praying to let me, you know, God get me out of Egypt, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> and, um, and pray the laundry list and. Within six months, God worked it out. There was a job at HSLDA. I didn't even seek it. It fell in my lap. He wow. opened so many doors. He's so faithful. So I like to share that story with other parents that think, you know, how am I going to homeschool? First of all, I don't know what to do, or I don't have any training. I don't have any background, or I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to have support. I don't even know where to start. But you know, God orchestrates things and he doesn't mm -hmm. waste any of our experiences and he will provide a way and the resources and his timing is perfect. Yes. Yes. I love that. Um, talk about why it's important to homeschool special needs children. What, what are, first, let me back up. Talk about some of the special needs that parents face today and then talk about some of the benefits that there are to homeschooling those kids. Sure. So, um, I mean, we see a huge gamut anywhere from gifted students, gifted with learning disabilities, or mm -hmm. the, they're referred to as twice exceptional. So they might have a learning disability or a processing problem on top of being gifted. Um, dyslexia is huge. I mean, about one in five people, depending on what stats you read, it could be one in five, one in 10 people are impacted with um, dyslexia. And then, of course, autism, you know, has skyrocketed. And so those are the two big groups. More and more families are pulling kids out of school mm -hmm. to homeschool because of special needs, specifically autism and dyslexia. We get a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails um, for those two subgroups. Mm -hmm. But it can be anywhere from anything and um, from just attention to processing problems, to anxiety. We're seeing a lot mm -hmm. more children that are struggling with mental health issues, um, bullying. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes parents will call and say, I don't know if I'm really, you know, if my child's really special needs or not. And um, I mean, I just kind of say, you know, we all have special needs, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're all unique. Yep. <laughs> We're all special and we all have specific needs. So whether it's just a slight struggle or attention issues or severe medical needs, mm -hmm. um, anywhere on, it's just a huge spectrum. Yes. So then talk about the benefits of bringing those children home or keeping them home if you've not yet started school with them. Right. Well, I mean, at HSLDA, we always tell parents that homeschooling really truly is an individualized education program. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what it is and due to its very nature. So um, parents are uniquely gifted. They know their children better than anybody. They love them more than anyone else and want to see them succeed. Um, you know, you're going to have much lower teacher to student ratios in the home setting when you compare that with even the very best um, 
let's say, special needs resource room with a trained teacher, Mm -hmm. their caseloads are like one in 15. Yeah. So um, it's individualized. You've got a low teacher-student ratio. You're able to customize instruction for them gear, your pacing, um, you know, if student needs frequent breaks, you can schedule around their sleep needs, medication needs, um, therapy. And um, it's just truly a better scenario than what they're going to get in a school setting because the schools can only do so much. They're understaffed. Mm -hmm. And even though we've thrown billions of dollars at education and special education, the the national report card for reading progress is terrible. I mean, you know, our public schools, kids are falling through the cracks and I'm not slamming public school teachers. I have friends that are, sure, you know, wonderful, um, loving and um, believers that are there and, and they're serving and they're doing the best they can, but um, but oftentimes their hands are tied and they're understaffed and they don't have the resources they need. So parents are uniquely able to do this. They don't need special training. Mm-hmm. Um, they need to just love and encourage their kids and meet them where they are. And that's the other beauty of homeschooling is we can truly meet our kids where they are developmentally. Mm-hmm. Um, reading develops on a continuum. So does math skills, you know, and, mm-hmm. um, we can meet them where they are right in that zone of proximal development where it's not too hard and it's not too easy. Yeah. And sometimes kids are reading at one level and math is on a different level. So um, it's, it's really a beautiful thing (laughs) and it works really well. And there's research to show Mm -hmm. that it's working well for students with special needs. Um, So parents don't need to fear and they don't need to cave into those um, when the questions come about it. Yes. Yes. I, I, I want to actually talk a whole lot about the fear that parents have. We're going to take a super quick break uh, for a sponsor and then we'll come back and let's start talking about parents who are fearful and going into this. We are back with Faith, and we're talking about special needs. Um, And and I know that one of the reasons, probably the biggest reason that parents who have children with special needs choose not to homeschool is out of fear. And you said something earlier that I think is so important to remember is that we know our kids better than anyone, and we love them more than anyone. We talk a lot about that on the podcast. Um, You know, there are some excellent teachers out there. But they don't know your children the way that you know them. They don't know their, you know, you, you talked about their sleep patterns and their medications and their different therapies that they may have to go to. And their, their teachers in a classroom, they cannot cater to those things like mom and dad can. And so it's such a beautiful opportunity for mom to be able to come along alongside her child and really help them develop in the way that God has created them because God's made your child the way that they are for a purpose. And it's not by mistake that you are their mom or that you are their dad. And so for those parents who are very fearful of keeping their kids at home to homeschool them, because again, like we said in the beginning, they've been told by their doctors and everyone else that they need to be in these special programs. Um, how do you, how would you encourage those parents to get started? What, what do they do to get started with, with helping their children? Right. So, I mean, obviously one of the first things I would encourage them would be to join HSLDA because Mm -hmm. oftentimes families will encounter some difficulties and pushbacks when it's a, you know, pushback when it's a child with special needs, Mm -hmm. typically from a well-meaning medical provider or a psychologist or a neighbor or something. So um, that can be scary. Yeah, it can be, but you know, a lot of times people will question and it's, Oftentimes, quite frankly, due to ignorance, they don't understand homeschooling, they don't understand the homeschooling law and, um, you know, or just misinformation. So um, 
so I would tell them to join. I would also help arm them with resources. Um, you know, if you're just getting started schooling a child with special needs, or let's say you're pulling out of public mm -hmm. school and closing an IEP, then, you know, navigate that process well. Um, we help them to do that. How do they withdraw and close the IEP? Um, and then... Now, ex explain what an IEP is. So an IEP is drafted by schools. It's an individualized education plan. Um, sometimes students will have what's called a 504 accommodation plan. Um, but basically, it's just a contract between the school and the parent, and it lays out um, this is the instruction we're going to provide or the intervention services or therapies, the frequency of those services, where they will occur. Is it in the regular classroom? Is it in a resource room? Is it in a therapy room? Something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then they'll have goals. They'll have long-term goals and short-term goals for the student to meet. Um, most often those are academic. Sometimes there's social goals, social skills and playing mm -hmm goals on there as well, or fine motor, gross motor, but typically they're mostly academic goals. But um, so <clears throat> if parents have had their child in public school and they've had an IEP, we'll help them navigate how to close that. Should they close it? Um, do they maybe want to homeschool, but then also get some services through the, through the school district? That's a parental um, option and a choice. HSLDA mm -hmm. stance is private services are best, if at all possible. Um, but some parents will choose to keep therapeutic or what's called related services. So we'll help them to transition then to what's called a service plan. Okay. If they opt to do that. But, um, you know, many, many parents by and large just choose to, to homeschool and not, um, not get those services and not have a, an official IEP drafted by the school. Mm -hmm. um, because again, homeschooling is an individualized educational plan. Sure. So, um, you know, fear, a lot of times parents are fearful because they think um, I'm not trained or I don't have any special background. Mm -hmm. So arming them with I mean, they are the expert when it comes to their child. So right. arming them with some good resources, you know, if you have a child with dyslexia, then we're going to point you to, hey, these are the top places to get, you know, resources and books and services for dyslexia or, you know, autism. Mm -hmm. um, and because knowledge is power and um, we we battle fear, right? By press. I mean, I battle fear by prayer and sure. pressing into God and learning. And, you know, what does, what does God say about me and about my child? And mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times in my work with HSLDA, um, I'll get the privilege to get to pray with parents and help them to, to press through their fear and to overcome the obstacles that, that are in their way that's causing the fear. And, Sometimes it's funding. Hey, my child needs therapy and we're broke, right? Homeschooling mm -hmm. is a financial sacrifice anyway. Sure. And then when you throw special needs on top of it mm -hmm. and you have medications or therapy or we need this adaptive equipment, assistive technology, then we'll help them with funding sources too. Okay. Which is great because I know that that's really enticing for a lot of families that maybe they do want to bring their kids home and they want to, to school them at home, but they can't afford the resources that are out there provided by the government. But once you um, give them over to the government to be able to <laughs> provide those resources, you're giving up control. You're saying, okay, now they're yours. You control what they do, what they're learning and how they're progressing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I mean, I know that there are some fantastic, um, you know, teachers out there and therapists and, and those people who are helping these special needs children, but um, you're still giving up control to those people. And um, so you, you mentioned resources. Um, can you talk specifically about that? What are some of the resources, maybe some books and different resources that, that you can suggest to parents? Sure. Um, I love, I actually have a couple here and I don't know if it's going to be backwards. Yeah. Okay. But um, this is homeschooling children with special needs. It's Sharon. Okay. Um, okay. 
it's an oldie but a goodie and I always tell parents it's like the bible <laughs> if you're going to be homeschooling a child with special needs you this is one you have to have homeschooling okay. children with special needs Sharon Hensley okay it's very encouraging but very practical it's chock full of resources okay that would be one that would be a definite um I also really um, encourage families to get Zan Tyler's book, The Seven Tools for Cultivating Your Child's Potential. Okay. Um, that's really, it's also really encouraging and, and practical, but, um, and then uh, Cheryl Swope, if you're familiar with her with Memoria Press, yep. she has a book called A Beautiful Child for Any a beautiful, excuse me, a beautiful education for any child. Okay. And, um, so Cheryl has homeschooled her daughter who's on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. And, um, but also Sharon Hensley's daughter is on the autism spectrum. Okay. So, okay. um, and they're, you know, both homeschooling moms. Um, so those would be some practical resources to help and for encouragement. Okay. Okay. So I'll, and I'll link to those, of course, in the show notes. Um, what else is there uh, that's out there? Because I know for myself, and especially if we're talking to a mom who is, you know, maybe she's got several kids and one or more of her children have special needs and she's exhausted. <laughs> and the thought of picking up three big books that are going to be fantastic for her to read through and, and dig into is just a little bit overwhelming. Um, I know that you're there and that's part of your job, right? At HSLDA is to, like you said before, come alongside those parents and encourage them and help walk them through is, and that's what you do mm -hmm. in your position, correct? And, and, and is it, let me ask you this as a member of HSLDA, if someone's a member, do they have access to you to be able to do that at any time? Or is that like an extra service that they have to pay for? How does that work? Right. So HSLDA is a small membership fee. It's annual. Um, and pe that gives people access 24 seven to the attorneys, but it also gives them access to any of the educational consultants. Okay. So we have toddlers to tweens consultants for early years and um, high school, and then the special needs um, ladies. And so people can email or call. It's not an extra fee. It's included. Um, okay. Great. Some of the other services they get are like tr free transcript review or in our department, the special needs consultants, let's say a family gets their child assessed, they get diagnostic testing done mm -hmm. and by a psychologist or mm -hmm. diagnosing professional. And they get this lovely report and a label or a diagnosis and scores, but oftentimes it's not practical in terms of now, what do I do? <laughs> what okay. curriculum do I use? How do I teach this child? And so that's another thing that we'll do is review okay. test reports for families and help to make recommendations and curricula suggestions that's specific to their Okay. Child. Which um, is fantastic because how many other places can you go and get that uh, and have people be able to help you figure out what, what specifically you need for your child? Right. They'd have to pay, you know, you'd have to pay a private, um, basically educational consultant to sure. help with that. And, and we do have a database of private homeschool friendly professionals mm -hmm. um, from across the nation. They've all come recommended to us by other homeschooling families and they've all been vetted and screened. And mm -hmm. so members can access that. So let's say they need to find somebody that does ABA therapy for a child with autism. They can search the database by their zip code and oh, okay. the type of professional or service that they're looking for. Or maybe it's just a math tutor, you know, um, so that continues to grow. We've built that over the last 20 years and it okay. continues to grow. So that's another thing that we offer the ways to support families. But, you know, there are more and more, I mean, organizations and their state homeschool associations usually have somebody on staff that's like the special needs point person. Mm -hmm. More and more state organizations are having um, support groups specifically for special needs or special conferences like Florida does one, the FPEA, they do a special needs conference, Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, 
parent home educators, they do one. Okay. Um, so more and more state orgs are starting those. And then um, you may not be familiar with Peggy Ployhar. I am, the- yes. Yeah, we actually yeah. interviewed her for the podcast. So it's been several months, uh, but I'll link to that show as well. She does SPED Homeschool. Yes, SPED yes. Homeschool. And yes. so that's great. You know, parents can find online support, be it a Facebook support group, like homeschooling with dyslexia or mm-hmm. homeschooling, you know, kids with Down syndrome. So yes. your online support groups are, are great, but obviously it's best if you can have somebody that let's have coffee or can I come over and (laughs) help me? And, um, you know, we can talk to people on the phone and help by email, but I always tell parents, it's great. You can definitely count on us, but there's nothing like having somebody there face to face close by to walk the journey with you. Yes. And that's why it's just so important for there to be support groups for parents who are homeschooling and specifically for special needs. Yes, I know that it can be a very lonely place to be, especially if you, you know, a lot of people are parts of different communities and co-ops and things like that with homeschooling. And if you have a child who, who has, especially if you have one that has very severe special needs, it can be very difficult to find your place in those different groups and co-ops. And, um, and so I know that it, it's so important. And I know Peggy Ployer talks about this, about finding your tribe, you know, find other people who you can connect with. And hopefully it's someone, like you said, that you can go and have coffee with at a coffee shop or, um, you know, be able to just meet up with in person, but that's not always possible. And so having other online groups and, and people that you can actually connect with, even if they don't live close by is just as important. But I will say also, and this goes for everything, even with co-ops, Oftentimes people will say, well, there's nothing in my area that offers assistance or, you know, companionship for, for somebody who's in my situation. Well, start one, maybe, you know, maybe God is calling you to start that for your area, because I can almost guarantee there's someone else out there in your area who's in the same boat as you, and you just need to be introduced to one another. And so sometimes it's just putting yourself out there and saying, Hey, I have a special needs child. Does anyone else out here? have one, let's talk, let's get together, let's get our kids together. And, um, and that can form such beautiful relationships between parents. And um, yeah. so I think that that's really important. Um, we have just a couple of more minutes left. And so I want to do two last things really quickly. Um, can you talk very quickly about how to accommodate special needs students at home? And then I would love for you to just give an encouragement to parents. So how, how can you best accommodate them? Sure. I mean, you can do things like frequent breaks and let them move um, Mm -hmm. while they're learning. Um, Learning doesn't have to be at a table. (laughs) Uh, I always tell parents, um, you know, for kids with dysgraphia, they can do oral narration or dictation and you can act as scribe um, or you can use assistive technology like drag and dictate um, or co-writer. You know, there's, we have lists of assistive technology and software tools that we'll share with parents. Um, You know, sometimes it's as simple as rather than having the child work in the workbook, we're just going to pull out a few problems. Uh, We're not going to do the whole worksheet or I'm going to cut the worksheet in half. We're going to do it on a whiteboard, Mm -hmm. um, you know, or taking a a big notebook and um, turning it sideways and giving them the paper or the page that they're writing on. So it's more of a slant board Mm -hmm. surface. Don't be afraid to cut up your workbooks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Make them into something else, you know, um, flip books or Mm -hmm. sorting the pictures in the workbook. Um, you know, instead of like a, like a phonics workbook page, for instance, where the child looks at the picture and has to write the first sound or the middle sound or the end sound. And, if writing's hard, then cut out the pictures and have them sort them on a mat by the sound and glue them down or something like that. So we can modify the materials, we can modify the expectations, the pace of, of the lesson and give them assistive technology. Audiobooks is a great way mm-hmm. um, to help students take in content and also help them be independent. So mom yes. and dad aren't reading everything to them. Yes. Um, those are some, you know, or having them 
circle answers or indicate answers and then the parent can bubble in like if it's a bubble sheet for standardized testing. Mm -hmm. okay. Untimed yeah. work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So many great ideas. It sounds like you have a whole bucket full of <laughs> ways that you can, can help parents figure out how to bring their kids home and, and uh, school them. Um, what would be your one last encouragement to parents who have children with special needs? Uh, well, don't go it alone. Like you said, try to find support. Um, tap into like national charitable organizations. And like you said, put yourself out there. To, mm -hmm. um, know that you're not alone. You might feel alone, but I just mm -hmm. want to encourage you that you're not. We're, I mean, all of us as homeschool moms, we all have bad days and we all struggle. And there are days where there's tears, whether it's our kids <laughs> or it's us, right? And we have, oh, we have great days too. And um, that homeschooling really truly is an individualized plan of education. Mm -hmm. And it can really be an excellent one. So you may feel alone, but you're not. And um, we're here to help you. And I would, would love to help. Yeah, yeah, that is fantastic. And like we say all the time on the podcast, God will give you everything that you need to accomplish what he's called you to. So if he's mm -hmm. calling you to keep your kids at home, he's going to equip you with everything that you need in order to, to do it well. Um, so where can people find out more about you? They can go to HSLDA's website um, and we have a quick navigation tab. It's teaching my kids. And if they click on that, they'll see high school early years and the uh, struggling learner page. Okay. Um, so hslda.org, um, okay. teaching my kids tab, or they can go to our Facebook page, HSLDA's Educational Consultants. We have a Facebook page. Okay. Um, if you want to find me personally on Facebook, you can find me at Faith Filled Homeschooling. Okay. Awesome. And Sped Homeschool too, because now I'm yes. serving on the board. With, that is so great. That's Peggy. such a beautiful yeah. organization. It's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah. So great. And I love that so many of you are coming together um, and just linking arms to help parents across the world um, with special needs children. So thank you so much, Faith, for what you do. Thank you for your dedication to encouraging parents and to helping them um, just stay the course of homeschooling because it's such an important and beautiful thing. So we appreciate all that you do and we appreciate all that HSLDA does. So thank you for your time today and for being on the podcast. And uh, we will link to all those things in the show notes so that people can find out more about you and what you're doing. Okay. Thank you so much, Yvette, for what you're doing and for having me today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. And thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Have a great day and we will see you next week.